I was only five years old at the time, but how could one forget after seeing something like this? The answer, you don't. I can safely assume every fighter in this series has a severe bleeding disorder because everyone bleeds buckets upon impact of almost every attack. But it doesn't end there. The amount of blood was high, but the fatalities turned it up to 11. There's Johnny Cage, a fighter based on the likeness of Jean-Claude Van Damme, but I don't know, he kinda looks like Nicolas Cage to me. Kano, a mercenary. Raiden, a thunder god. Liu Kang, who loves to shout. Scorpion, the badass Spectre. Sub-Zero, the ice ninja. And Sonya, the, um... Robots Constructor. Now, unless you know how to exploit the game's AI, the computer will kick your ass. I cannot tell you how many times I lost to the computer. It can be so cheap. Now, it's not so bad when you begin, but just after the third match is when things get so ridiculous. Opponents are able to block a counterattack on a split second's notice, and sometimes they can do things that are impossible for a human player to do. Well, at least I think it's impossible for a human player to do. If you're able to be single player using only one life, that you are truly a force to be reckoned with, or you're just some hacker. The game now hosts 12 characters with new faces being Baraka, fake face, Jax, the muscle-bound soldier, Katana, princess, I guess, Kung Lao, Kung Lao, Melina, and Reptile, a hidden opponent from the first game, now given his own moveset. There's also the secret opponents known as Jade, Smoke, and Noob Saibot, but I'll let you get your butt whooped by them to let you know how awesome they are. Characters now contain two fatalities in addition to friendships and babalities, alternate ways to finish your opponent without actually killing them. In some way, having a friendship or babality performed on you can be more humiliating than being killed. In terms of new characters, Mortal Kombat 3 added several. New to the roster is Cyrax, Cabal, t uh, I mean Nightwolf, Sector, Sindel, Shiva, and Stryker. In addition to adding new characters to the series, several old faces were given to Axe. No Raiden, no Reptile, no Johnny Cage, no Katana, no Molina, and no Scorpion. What? You can't have a Mortal Kombat game without both Sub-Zero and Scorpion. It's like releasing a Street Fighter game with Ken, but no Ryu. Blood and Violence also makes a return, but now the overall cheesiness of it has been cranked up to ridiculous levels. I mean, wow. Alright, so apparently explosions give you extra heads, legs, and arms. In terms of finishing moves, every character still has two fatalities each in addition to the returning friendships. Friendship? Again? While every Mortal Kombat game had its share of balance issues, never has it seemed so bad here. I mean, buy it on Xbox Live, play online, and see how many cabals and cyborg smokes you run into. These characters are ridiculously overpowered. Now maybe it's just because I suck, but something just seems wrong here. Secondly, a lot of the fatalities just outright suck. I mean, the first two games had fatalities that were not only a sight to see, but were also a hell of a lot more gruesome. But now... Why doesn't the body tumble over? It just looks so odd that the body doesn't even move after that. Well, that was just lame. Uh, uh, what the hell was that? The screen just fades black and all we hear is a scream? That's just pure lazy. In terms of reception, it was well received. The combos were fine tuned, the graphics were pretty nice at the time, and overall, it was everything you'd expect from a Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> Eventually, Mortal Kombat 4 will get the ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 treatment and be re-released for the Dreamcast under the title Mortal Kombat Gold. In addition to being an arcade perfect port, the graphics were smoother and additional characters were added to the mix, making Gold the definitive version of Mortal Kombat 4. Though personally, I'm still waiting for Ultimate Mortal Kombat 4 Gold Special Edition with the 87 Casio. Single player is actually nowhere near as bad as it used to be, and you can reach the final stage quite easily now. So, why did it take them three games to fix that problem? In addition to an easier single player, the game now has cinematic endings, which are absolutely hilarious. I mean, just try not to laugh when you see how cheesy these endings are. The Black Dragon died with Kano. You're the last one, Jarek. Never! Never, sorcerer! <laughs> and just what exactly is Sector doing here? Yeah! 
And I want to start where I started with Street Fighter 2 on the SNES, but shockingly, this is not where the series started. I know that's like, well, no shit, genius, but would you believe a lot of people didn't even realize there was a Street Fighter 1? It's not as far-fetched as you may think. And I know I just said this was more of a personal look back, but I gotta look at the game that, like it or not, started this whole shindig. So come on, let's give Fighting Street a- Oh! Oh! Oh, oh fuck! Oh! Stop! Stop! God, stop! God damn it! Stop! Some of these guys will make very short work of you, complete with the same quote every time you lose, and no matter who you lost against, it's always the same voice clip. You've got a lot to run before you beat me. Try again too. <laughs> I wish there was a female fighter here, because I know if I lost to her in this game, she'd have the same fucking voice clip. You've got a lot to run before you beat me. Try again too. <laughs> Hoping your opponent goes down before you do. You're just trading blows with combat that sports no combo system or technical finesse. It might as well be Rock'em Sock'em Robots. If the game feels like allowing it, you can foolishly attempt to execute special moves, and it's all the classic maneuvers, the Hadouken, the Hurricane Kick, because Tatsumaku Senpo Kyaku doesn't roll off my tongue exactly, and there's the Shoryuken. They are very damaging moves. They can turn the tide so quickly if you manage to pull them off. Look at how fast I drain this guy's health down. One-on-one -on -one battle with Sagai. Look at that face. It's less like he's a champion of Thailand and more like he's got an allergic reaction to success. Well, too bad for him. He's gonna keep winning. This asshole moves so fast with his jumping knees, his low and high projectiles, and his gargantuan frame. A classic final boss for an arcade fighting game where he's not after your pride, he's after your fucking pocket change. But it's up to the game, not so much yourself, on whether or not you have any amount of success or not because button inputs are a mess, hitboxes are an entirely different can of worms, and the AI can range from a rabbit attack dog to poor birdie. <laughs> Man, I played the hell out of this game as a kid. This was all I knew growing up, and living in a house with a Super Nintendo, a brother who was just as anxious to play the game, and an uncle who was there to put us in our place. Even my mom at some points got into the action. My mom, who at that point only cared about Tetris, and there she was kicking my ass with Chun-Li. It was a great time, and when we weren't playing at home, there was always an arcade machine nearby, because back then they were still rather prevalent, especially in corner stores. Unlike Street Fighter 1, I can actually fucking do their special moves on command, and I've won many rounds using these attacks when my opponent was open, whether it was a Brazilian Brazilian jungle, a Japanese bathhouse, breaking someone's tower of bricks, smashing someone's alcohol barrels, or smashing someone's car, the Street Fighters are assholes. Tiger! 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 Uppercut! Tiger! Do I even go back to this game, the very original Street Fighter 2 today? The answer is a clear cut, oh god no. Street Fighter 2 is responsible for setting a lot of standards that many, many other companies would mimic and tweak in their own ways, but one thing that has not aged well in Street Fighter 2 was its speed. This game is almost unbearably slow, and on the SNES, it's prone to a shit ton of lag. I loved this game back then, but this is the main reason why I won't go back to this iteration. I repeat, this iteration, because, oh yeah, there's plenty more where that came from. If I'm going back to Street Fighter 2, it's with Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and if there's one version I could recommend, it's Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix for the PS3 and Xbox 360, my mouth, it hurts. It's got everything great about Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo's add-ons with completely redrawn HD sprites courtesy of Udon Entertainment. I'm a big fan of their work. I've had this promotional image as a poster for nearly 10 years. What's going on with Ryu's chest here? Is that normal for a muscular build? It's like his pecs are trying to escape each other. And I have no regrets in stating that I'm an unapologetic fan of this movie. I have the fucking Blu-ray for Christ's sakes, and I went to go see this in theaters when it was first released. I was a seven-year-old Street Fighter fan. It's hilariously cheesy. I recommend it if you just want some cornball fun, especially for Raw Julia's performance, rest his soul. And would you know, there was a video game adaptation of the Street Fighter movie. Street Fighter the movie, the game. This was clearly an attempt to cash in on Mortal Kombat success because the game decides to use digital motion capture for character sprites and it looks fucking ridiculous. I don't know, when I see a live action Guile do a flash kick or a live action Ken do a hurricane kick, I'm laughing my ass off. To see characters that didn't throw a single punch in the movie suddenly do high flips and shit and shoot fireballs, you know, hey, it's as every bit as corny as the film. So if you love the movie, 
I don't think it would hurt getting this for your collection. They even added the Japanese general guy Sawada for the film. The guy who had maybe two lines in the whole film and he got his own character slide. What the shit? Look at what kind of super move is that supposed to be? He just slides in place. Like his insatiable need for a hug is enough to be a fucking super attack. What do you think Zangief is doing here? This shit isn't a stun animation. That's me trying to blend in a nightclub. You facing off against Fei Long who was voiced by Brian Cranston? Come on, it's not every day where I can say I saw a movie where Ryu spin kicked the fucking hell out of Walter White. Bison inflated himself with an air pump. Is this even the same guy? He's like a walking bicycle teeth. The Alpha series also took the time to bring back characters from the original Street Fighter. So we had the returning Adon, Birdie, and the oldest living man in video games, Gen. Starting with Sodom and Guy, this is also where Capcom decided to bring in characters from their final fight lineup, a classic beat em up series. This would later extend to guys like Cody and Rolento, but never Mike Hager, probably because Zangief already fits the grappler quota, I'm not too sure on that. And that's how I can describe the Alpha series, energetic. The opening movies are in your face with high speed graphics, gameplay can be very fast for Street Fighter standards, particularly in Alpha 3's case with its variety of different combo systems. And speaking of Alpha 3, that damn announcer. Go for it, man! Super Gem Fighter Mini Mix, also known as Pocket Fighter in North America. It's what happens when you take the cutesy designs of Super Puzzle Fighter, a puzzle spinoff, and put them back into a fighting game. It's cute. Character combos have them transforming in all kinds of ways, and it's normally an excuse for some good old fashioned Capcom fan service. Mega Man, Darkstalkers, Ghost and Goblins. I think Chun Li transforms into a Star Gladiator character. It's also weird how the character select screen in arcade mode only shows you a select number of characters, with the other choices being off screen. Whoa, man, if that isn't the biggest booty warrior face I've ever seen Ken give, I don't know what comes close. Well, maybe Adonis Street Fighter Alpha, but Ken's a close second, and Dawson thinks that's A-OK. -okay. Street Fighter 3 had three iterations total. Hey, <laughs> okay, there was the next generation, the first version of the game, second impact, and finally third strike. Strike. Third Strike is where I jumped in around 2006, a whole seven to eight years after it came out. And I wish I jumped in sooner, I really do. And in gameplay, this has one of my favorite techniques in all of Street Fighter, parrying, where if you can time directional inputs just right, you can block an attack without taking any small chip damage. It's a high risk, high reward mechanic that's incredibly hard to master, but damn satisfying to pull off right. Street Fighter 3 is considered the most technical game in the franchise. A Street Fighter's Street Fighter, if you will. I love it, but I feel I have so much to learn in player matchups, move canceling, buffering, cross ups, reversals. Tell me, is that how you sell a game to someone who's never played a Street Fighter game? Hell. No. And Dudley's just cool. A British boxer that'll crush your face in and then invite you for afternoon tea later. When I'm thinking of the cast, I also sort of immediately think of the final boss, Gil, though I take no pleasure in that, believe me. Look at this tall motherfucker. Hey, you, you won't find a more dedicated college football fan, but I really wish he wore a little more than tidy whities Oh God, I can see everything. And he can resurrect himself if he has a charged super meter when you knock him out. I hate that shit. Ow. Street Fighter 4, later followed by Super Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, and Ultra Street Fighter 4, the latter sporting one of the largest rosters in Street Fighter history. If you follow Street Fighter 4 from the very beginning up until Ultra Street Fighter 4, that's over a hundred something dollars you spent on roster updates, balance tweaks, and costumes. I'm not judging for the record, I'm totally guilty of investing in every fucking update myself and I slightly hate myself for it. I was also a fan of Street Fighter 4's approach to 3D character models. Everybody's been hitting the gym like a motherfucker. The muscle detail is all gritty and scratchy and burnt. I love the jaw dropping reactions the opponent gives off when you're just about to smack them with an ultra attack when you know that shit's about to connect. It's great. But because Capcom also really wants to milk us for all we're worth, they also have the option of a seasonal pass that can give you the new characters immediately when they're released in case you don't feel like playing the game and instead just want to jump in and play the game. And take care. Thank <laughs> you.